All right, so let's begin, okay? Um, so I decided to start with the 48 Laws of Power, all right? And the reason why I decided to start with this is because there are some, it, it has short chapters, it's straight to the point, and there's a lot of things that everybody could apply, you know what I'm saying? So we're gonna start with this one. I don't know how long this is gonna take, but take notes. Everything that I'm gonna talk about is gonna, you're gonna be able to apply it today, all right? And it's gonna be very interesting because we make the, we outshine, like outshining the master is, is a mistake that a lot of people do simply because they're thinking of themselves, all right? So let's begin, okay? This is gonna be really fun, okay? Um, hashtag mindful gang people, hashtag Patreon. If you're my Patreon, put that hashtag Patreon gang so I can see you guys, all right? Because everyone in my Patreon are open-minded individuals, right? Who are very, you know, I wish there was more self-help content. Jasmine Young, I don't know who you are. You just posted that. All right, so let's begin this, right? So a master, by the way, who, if you're asking what's a master, master is anybody above you, right? Um, a master is a, hey, what's up, freeloaders? <laughs> I love our freeloaders. Um, a master is anybody who's above you. It could be your boss. It could be your art teacher. It could be your basketball coach. Anybody who's around, who, who's above you, right? And I could show you guys an example of people breaking. Have you guys, have you guys ever heard of um, Jerry Scrouts, the 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 NBA, the, the the NBA owner of the Chicago Bulls, right? He was never given credit for that dynasty. Jerry Scrouch was never given credit for that dynasty. It was Michael Jordan, and it was Scottie Pippen, and um, and the Chicago Bulls. And, um, and Phil Jackson, they all got the credit. But what happened? They outshined the master. They made the owner feel like he wasn't part of the success. So what happened? What, he, what did he do? He, de he destroyed that whole dynasty. He, he literally he prematurely, he prematurely allowed Jordan to leave the Bulls simply because he felt like he wasn't given the credit. That's how shining the master. He, he he maybe he didn't build he maybe he didn't build the dynasty. But if they would have just given him credit, just say yeah he's the main reason why we're this, it would have maybe kept the dynasty going. But they didn't. They made him feel insignificant. You see what I'm saying? The guys know what I'm talking about. The people who watch basketball know what I'm talking about. Another example of our shining the master is, is Kobe Bryant and Shaq. Kobe Bryant wanted to shine Shaq. Kobe Bryant wanted to be better than Shaq. So what happened? Shaq left. There was a lot of conflict. But if Kobe was more humble, if Kobe let Shaq be Shaq for the moment because he knew he was, he, was, oh, he was younger than Shaq. But what happened? They both underperformed because they couldn't get along. Why? Because you had a, 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 a guy, a new dude, who had a lot of ego. There's nothing wrong with that. But he wasn't aware that he was trying to outshine Shaq. He was trying to go above the ranks. What he should have done, he should have acted like the Pippin because it was only going to be temporary. Shaq was only in his prime for three years afterwards. And they would have won maybe two more together. They would have won maybe five. But what happened? Kobe didn't like that. And Kobe wanted to be the man. Nothing wrong with that. The same with Kevin Durant and, 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 and what, Russell Westbrook, right? Russell Westbrook wanted to outshine Kevin Durant. What happened? He, he left and won championships with another team. It's not like, it's not like, it's not like Clay Thompson and Steph Curry. What, what did Clay Thompson do? Clay Thompson let Steph Curry be the man. Clay Thompson doesn't want any of the credit. He doesn't outshine the master. So, so that's what I want you guys to understand. There's a lot of consequences for shining the people who are above you, right? So masters want to appear smarter than, than other people, right? They care about their image. Your boss cares about being cool. Your boss cares about being smart, right? So what you want to do is be able to put them in a position where they appear as though they are the reason for their success, right? I'm going to let I'm gonna let people join the chat, but please, if you join, don't talk, all right? Just listen, okay? If you join, don't don't talk. Just listen, right? So, so, so your goal as a student, as a student in human nature, as a student in trying to become to gain power in life, is to make your master shine above others. Talk great about your master because other masters are going to be looking at you, and they're going to see how you talk about your master. They're going to see how you talk about your boss. Other people around you, they're going to see how you, how, how you interact with people above you, right? So that's our goal. When we, when we are learning a new craft, our responsibility isn't to make ourselves look better. Our responsibility is to make our master look better. Because if you make them look better, 
they'll instill more knowledge on you. They'll focus more on you. They'll, they'll bring you closer to their circle and they'll reveal to you secrets that would, they would never reveal to you if they didn't have a, a, a fun, a good feeling about you. You know what I'm saying? Because when you don't make them feel superior to other people, what tends to happen is that they then begin to sort of unconsciously d dislike you. You know what I'm saying? You're not making them feel how they should, how they see themselves, right? So to attain mastery and power in any field, right, you should always give them credit for your success, at least in the moment, at least in the moment, right? And also, never outshine the, um, um, what was it? What was it? I was gonna say, never outshine um, your teacher while you're under them, right? So that doesn't mean that once you once you become better. You see, what I'm trying to say is this, sorry, I'm, I'm like losing track, is that if you're under your boss, as long as you're under them, as long as you depend on them, don't outshine them, right? Because the problem is that you think that, that you, you, you help them out, that you, you gain their favor by being gifted, by showing how gifted you are. You think you, you, you gain their favor by showing them how talented you are, right? But what that does is that it makes them feel insecure, Right? It makes him feel insecure. You're not going to win his affection by showing how talented you are, by showing them how gifted you are. Right? What he'll do is that he'll act like they like it, but then they'll replace you. It's just how it is. They'll act like they like the fact that you're so brilliant, that you're so charismatic, but you're outshining him. You're making him look worse. You see what I'm saying? So what you want to do is be strategic about it. And remember these three things. One... You cannot, you, you cannot shine, you can, under, um, you can by mistake, by mistake, right? Oh, somebody, I will become a IV, oh, somebody says I will become a Patreon, but I do not want my name credited anywhere. All right, that's fine. Okay, IV, um, let me make a note to my, um, to my assistant to say that. Don't credit IV for Patreon. All right. Anyways, as I was saying, um, so never you could you could by mistake outshine your your master by being who you are because some people are just naturally charismatic, some people are just naturally more funny. Like I've I've encountered those people, like I've encountered people who I think I'm funny, but there are just some people that when they talk they're just funnier than you, they're just better than you, like they're just more likable than you. You see what I'm? There are just some people who are just more likable than you. And the, and the vice versa. There are some people that you're just better than them and it's obvious to everybody, right? So what you want to do, the first thing you want to do is be able to mute your charisma, right? And, 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 and or it, Because if you don't do that, they're going to find somebody else. They're going to find somebody who can make them look better, right? So it's kind of like if you're somebody who's like me, right? If I was around a boss who was charismatic and I'm more charismatic than him, I'll make sure to tone that shit down, man. I'll make sure to be more humble, to be less funny, to be more boring, to be more innocuous, right? I'll still work hard, right? I'll still be there, I'll still be consistent, right? But I'll make sure that I massage his ego, right? So never, never assume that by being the best, by being the most charismatic, by being the funniest, by being the most flirtatious, is what gets you, is what um, wins the favor of your master. That's not what it is, right? And the second thing is never imagine just because he loves you now, just because you're his number one, that you'll be his number one forever. Do not take your position for granted. You could be, you could be his top dog. You could be your master's favorite student. But if you think that he's always gonna feel that way or that this is genuine, you're gonna, you're gonna fall because you're gonna take it for granted. You're gonna start acting out. You see what I'm saying? You should always feel like you're behind. You should always feel like you're you're always trying to get ahead. That you're that you're behind the ball. Always feel a sense of disadvantage. Always feel a sense to prove yourself with your work ethic, not with your brilliance, not with how much you know, but how much you want to learn. That's how you want to prove yourself. Prove yourself with your willingness to learn and your work ethic. Never with how fun, you, right? never with how charismatic you are, how attractive you are, or how good your work is. Let people focus more on your work ethic. That's, that, that really should be it, right? So ne also, never take your position for granted and never let the good favors that people do to you or how much of a high ranking you are in life get to your head. Because you're gonna develop a sense of a an unhealthy sense of entitlement. You could develop grandiosity, or you, you're the boss's number one. You're gonna start acting like you're the boss's number one, and your friends, your coworker, your employees, your your classmates, are gonna begin to envy you, or they and they're gonna begin to talk bad about you, 
and they'll begin to sabotage you and you'll end up leaving that job being the best at what you did and wondering why. Why did they not like me? Because motherfucker, you outshine everybody. You outshined everybody. You know, stop it from the start. Do not try to be this outstanding student, this outstanding anything from the start. At least hide it. You know what I'm saying? At least hide it. So that then when you, so as you gain power slowly, like Putin, like Putin, I don't know too much of the story about Putin, but all I know about Putin is that Putin wasn't, you could never, you could never by just looking at the way Putin acted, that he was going to be, he was going to rise to power. You want to be that, you want to be that sneaky, you know? Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, and, and, and that even goes to females. If you're, if you're part of a social circle, like if you're a girl, right, and you're the hottest girl in your social circle, you got to you, you gotta make sure you don't make your friends insecure. You know what I'm saying? Because there's always one friend that everybody follows, right? So it's kind of like if you're better looking than that one friend, I can promise you that that one friend is not going to want you around, around, around men. That one friend is not going to want you around, around other people because they think that you might win all of their friends over. You see what I'm saying? They said this. Somebody said in the comment section is that a wise person knows that he knows nothing. Stay quiet, be patient, learn and success will come when the time is right. Exactly, right? All right, so let's keep going, right? So know this, right? So do the following. Flatter your boss. Flatter people. Learn to flatter people's um, ego, right? And puff, up and puff them up. Um, but never go too far. Don't get down on your knees and start sucking his dick. Guy or woman, all right? You, you got to know that you could praise somebody, but do not go too far because it's going to look obvious to everybody. Don't be an ass kisser. Don't be a brown nose, right? Flat it, but don't go too far, right? It might make you, it might make the people around you insecure. Like making him feel, like for example, these are some of the indirect ways you could make your master appear greater, right? One, you could ask them for advice and then come back and let them know that the advice worked. Right? That's how you can flatter their intelligence because if you never ask for advice from your boss, your boss is going to say, I'm pretty smart. Why isn't this person asking me for advice? I remember that happened to me when I was younger, when I was a social worker. Uh, my boss always asked me to come to her and ask for advice. Come to her and ask for advice, right? In the beginning, I used to do that. But as I began to get better at my job, I stopped doing it, right? And she noticed I never did that. Thinking back, I realized that deep down she wanted to show that she that she knew her job, that she was a, that 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 she was um, good at what she did, through um, because she was a nice person, so she wouldn't feel pride by feeling by 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 humbling you or you know what I'm saying she felt pride by helping people right that's how you I was able to uplift her, and what happened is after a while I stopped coming back to her and I noticed her energy changed towards me. What I should have done. Is that even though I didn't need it, I would ask, I should have just asked for advice about random things that I don't need. At least once every two weeks or even once a week, I should have asked her for something, came back with feedback, and fed her ego. But what happened? I ended up getting fired from that job, right? So that's what some of the things that you could do, right? Um, other things that you, other things that you could do is um, like one, taking advice and returning to them, right? If you can't make him feel like his gifts can't help you, they'll suddenly disdain you, right? Other things that you could do is commit harm, harmless mistakes. Mistakes that does not destroy your reputation, right? Like like anything small. Everybody will know what that is in your field. What are the mistakes that you could make but that they will forgive you for? Make those mistakes and then ask for advice. Take his advice. Come back to him and say, hey, boss, you helped me with this little thing, right? It's all about making them feel um, greater than they are, right? Um, so remember, you should strategically elevate those around you strategically. Become aware of those who you need to elevate. To gain people's favor, a lot of times, isn't about saying good, it isn't about being better than them, right? But about uplifting them making them feel better than you because then they'll be they'll they'll help you out more simply because they think you can never be at their level you see what i'm saying like 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 how can i say this if you're somebody that works hard but doesn't look like you have a lot of potential they'll put they'll make you the right hand man because you're not a threat to them so they'll tell you secrets because they know you're not going to follow through because they think you don't have ambition they just think you're a hard worker 
right? So what you want to do is you got to be selfish about this. Hide. We're going to talk about this in the next video about the chapter two. But hide your intentions, right? Act like you don't have high ambition, but you're a hard worker. Because then they will bring you closer, reveal to you secrets that we don't reveal to everybody. But then when it's time to leave, you'll leave like you have no heart. Right? Because what you have to remember, you're doing this for a reason. You are not a nice person. You're here to, you're here, and I tell this for everybody, man. I want some fucked up fans. I want fans who don't give a fuck. I want fans who embrace their dark side. I want fans who know they're not nice. What you gotta realize is that you gotta be selfish with this. Once you get what you want, you gotta bounce and think and, and do not even look back. Right? So, so and, and also, you, you guys might think, oh, you know, this is weak, you know, why you got to act like you don't know something? Because this is called strength in disguise as weakness. You're disguising your, your strength for weakness. You're acting like you don't know something so that they can drop their card and give you what you want. Because if, you, if you're a competitor, I remember when I was a Christian, right, um, there, was, there used to be this one girl, I'm not going to name her, right? But I was like the top dog in my church, right? <laughs> and like in my city in terms of like as a preacher, right? And um, and there was this one girl who came up and who was like, she was on fire, bro. She was a preacher, like she knew the Bible. And like, but she was in my church and part of my church group. She was out fucking shining me, motherfucker. And I was like, I, I got jealous. Like, I remember that feeling. I was, I was hoping that she, I was hoping the devil got to her. <laughs> I was hoping she banged somebody and her reputation will go down, right? But it didn't happen, you know. She ended up banging the um, the church, the, the the bass dude, and got married, so she did it the right way. But she outshined me. She fucking outshined me, and I felt jealous. So I, a part of me wanted to sabotage her ass, right? It's just like that. Is that as as nice as somebody looks on the outside? If you're the hot girl from your group, and all of a sudden there's a hot, a new hot girl in your group. You're gonna you're, you're gonna feel insecure. It's like NBA players, right? You might think that being an NBA player, you might think that being like the mid NBA player is cool. That's there's nothing wrong with that. But imagine you having a girlfriend, right? And you're the top dog in her life, and then you're part of 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 um of the Lakers, and you have Kobe Bryant in your team, and then you have Paul Gasol, people who relatively are higher status than you, even though you're higher status than 95 percent of the people. But because now you got it, now you're insecure to introduce her to your teammates. Why? Because your your teammates might outshine you. Your teammates earn more than you. They're bigger superstars. You, you see what I'm trying to say? It's kind of so I'll be insecure to bring you around LeBron James because LeBron James, he's the king. And she might think, what am I doing with this queen? I want to get the king. You, you see what I'm saying? So it's kind of like... But if I knew that LeBron James wouldn't out outshine me, if I knew that LeBron James would make me look good, I'll bring him that. I'll bring him to my girlfriend. You, you see what I'm trying to say? You see what I'm trying to say, right? Guys, understand what I'm trying to say. Um, so another thing, the reversal to this, right? Let me see if the guys' channels. All right, good. Let me see if anybody joined on Patreon. Nice. We got a new Patreon supporter, Jasmine. She she edited her Patreon from one dollar to five dollars. Thank you so much. Now you can watch all of the videos. Now you can watch all of the videos. All right, all right. So let's let's keep going, right? Um, and don't forget, people. I'm only posting this for for the next hour. I think I'm gonna delete it because you know I want to give you guys opportunity to watch it for free. But I also want you guys to check out my course. I mean my uh, my Patreon account. All right. So I am selling you guys something, but at the same time, I'm doing it for free. If, if we're being transparent, I'm selling you guys something right now, okay? Um, but at the same time, I'm providing value, so this is how you do it. Um, so yeah, that's all reversal, right? If your master is going crazy, like if you have a master and he's going down, let's just assume your master is um, Grant Cardone, right? Or let's just assume your master is a company that's going down, right? You could definitely outshine that master, right? So if, if that dude is losing his reputation, if that dude is going bonkers, if that dude is, is mismanaging funds, if that if that master of your boss is doing a horrible job and everybody knows it, then you can fucking outshine that dude. He doesn't deserve to be on top, right? Outshine him, right? Only stay only stay on the bottom when you when they have something you need. Be Machiavellian. Who the fuck cares if it's evil or not? Be Machiavellian. Tap into 
Always have your hand in your sword, even for a friend. Always be willing to go deep into the into your dark side. Like I made a video about that on Patreon, which you guys can check out. Always be willing to to pull out that sword. You know, I, I want you guys to expand the way you guys see yourselves. Don't just think yourself as nice people, like I said in today's video on Patreon. Don't just see yourselves as nice as nice people. Expand the vision of who you are into a into a dark person who's willing to do anything to achieve their goals, as long as you don't go to jail. Right, so stay low, and if you need to out to uh, stay low, if you need something from them, who cares if it's selfish? It is selfish. Most probably, your boss did the same shit to get on top. Most likely, the person who you feel bad for outshining, most likely they did the same shit to be on top. That same dude who you love, oh, I don't want to hurt, most likely did the same shit to be on top. It's just how it is. It's how the game is played. The most powerful people in the world have an ability to tap into their darkness and do and do what people think is wrong, for the sake of the, for the sake of what's for the sake of, of the bottom line. <laughs> like bottom line, right? It's fucked up. Who cares? You know, like honestly, like like this is why I don't like some dating coaches who act like fucking angels. A lot of dating coaches who who just want you to to be in this in this fear of of no negativity, please. You know, like like be angels, okay? Hover and be angels. Get the fuck out of here, man. Go to hell. Go get the fuck out of here. Be angels. That's how you end up being played. Get the fuck out of here, man. Me with my channels, my subscribers, man. You guys know how to embrace your dark side. You guys know how to tell an old lady to go fuck herself when you're trying to get some toilet paper. You guys are willing to pull, push that old lady for your shit. You guys are, when you see a little kid crying because he doesn't get his toys, you're willing to point at him and laugh at him. Ha! Ha! You didn't get your toy, little kid. You're willing to do that shit because you know you're not an angel. You know? You're not an angel. It's just how it is. You know? It's just how it is. People are telling me I better be smoking right now. I know it's 420, but I got work to do. Right? I'm here to help you guys out. Um... Let me see. So your master must have done the same thing so you don't have to be merciful. Exactly, right? And that is the first law of power. Oh, shit. Dollar, right? Ooh. Ooh. First law of power. Never outshine the master. But let's read the first thing that it says. It says, always make those above you comfortably superior. Like with men. Like I got to tell women, with men, make them feel like the man. Make them feel like they have you. Make them feel superior to you because that's how you pull down their guards. If you're in your desire to please and impress them, do not go too far in displaying your talents or you might accomplish the opposite. Inspire fear and insecurity. Make your master appear more brilliant than they are and you will attain the height of power. It's just how it may, like if you're a great actor, if you're a great actor and, and, and you make a new unbelievable actor, do not credit your success to yourself. Credit the the um credit your your um your the director. Credit your agent. Even though you are the the, the reason for success, mother people will t people will people will talk good for you. They'll say, hey, he's not the reason for success. It's his boss. It's it, his boss is not the reason for success. It's dumb. Let them say it. You say good things. Cause look, if you're the reason for success, it's gonna be obvious. Everybody's gonna know. Everybody's gonna know that you're the reason for success. So you you don't need to be defending yourself. You just don't. You know? You, you just don't. You know? Look, man, I talk I'm gonna be talking a lot about this in, in in this um Patreon account, right? It's gonna be good. I'm gonna leave the notes and stuff like that. And I may even leave some action plans, right? Because it's gonna be a book club. Um they I only want people who are open minded. I don't want no judgment people no judgmental people who be like, oh, oh. Oh, you being evil. Well, I'm a nice person. I'm an angel. I, I don't want you. I, I don't. I don't fucking want you. I, I don't want you in that. I want people who know they're fucked up. I want people who who know that they have a good side as well as they have a dark side, because those are the most powerful people. Nice people get played. Always remember that. If you're nice, you're gonna get played eventually. You, you just will. You know. And I want to see what's a Patreon gang. Hashtag Patreon gang. Hashtag Patreon guy, and we'll leave this now. Let's see, where are my Patreon peeps? Nice, we got me, uh, Ivy. 
Nice, Ivy. She became a $25 Patreon supporter. And in that, she not only gets the videos for my um, live stream, which is, you know, what I just did right now, but she, but she also gets to ask one question per month for free, you know, and I'll make a video based on that question, right? Um, but anyways, oh, shit. Oh, fuck. It, her, her name is, um, um, oh, fuck. Um, I, uh... Of uh, Ivy Licious, her name is Ivy Licious. I don't know why I said Ivy. Ivy Licious. It's a cool name, by the way. It's a cool name. Uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, all right, people. This is it, man. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Next week, we're gonna have. I'm gonna be posting these videos twice a week. I mean, twice a month. I may do more because I'm. T I tend to be an obsessive person, but for now, it's gonna be twice a month. Um, I'm definitely, I'm going to make this one public for all of my Patreon supporters. Um, and even for my, um, for my, for my YouTube following, right? Today, I'm going to make another one specifically for Patreon, for the, um, um Patreon book club. Um, and this one is going to, it might be chapter two. Um, it might be chapter two. Never put too much truck. Look. Never put too much trust in, in friends. Learn to use your enemies. Or I might upload the laws of human nature, um, a video on the laws of human nature. Who knows? But stay up to date. This is going to be fun, people. I'm excited about this. I really am, right? Uh, let me see if there's any more Patreons, and we'll call it there.